Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. You know, the other day I was cleaning out my basement. Still a work in progress, as you can see. Uh, but I came across this box that I knew was down here, but I really had not looked inside it for quite a number of years. And it contains various pieces of artwork from my uh, high school years, college years, and beyond. And because I had not seen them for so many years, I thought it would be fun for us to kind of rediscover them together by way of a series of videos. This will be the first one showing these lost pieces of artwork. All right, so I'm going to be looking at these uh, roughly in the order that I created them, and this is probably the oldest of them all. This goes back to the year 1979. It says, can you find the 30 things wrong in this picture? Very much indebted to Norman Rockwell, who uh, did a series of April Fool's covers for the Saturday Evening Post. Oil paintings, beautiful. Uh, illustrations in which he deliberately uh, uh, made some things wrong uh, in the uh, picture, challenged the readers to find all the uh, sort of deliberate mistakes. And so it's sort of fun uh, to, to look at what I did here. Some of the ideas uh, indeed stolen straight from uh, Norman Rockwell. He's wearing two different kinds of shoes, uh, mushrooms growing over here in the corner, this impossible, what do you call one of these things? Some of you may know what it is, the sort of impossible. Object and the reason that I know that it's 1979 is because I wrote my name backwards Yellerk Kram and it says 97, but actually that's 79. It must be December 79 when I made this illustration um, Interesting to see you know struggling with issues of anatomy and so forth um, But uh, not bad for what was I? Uh, 13 years old something like that. Let's go ahead and have a look at another piece so this is very emblematic of my drawing style back in the high school years. Uh, an, an illustration, kind of moody, heavy, deep meaning. <laughs> it appears deep, but actually I think this is just a copy of a uh, photograph of Kim Wilde, the pop star uh, from the 1980s. And uh, yeah, but you could see me sort of working through emotional issues, trying to convey something by way of this uh, illustration. Notice how most of the lines all go in this... Uh, diagonal path. That was uh, something that I did a lot of back then. And on the reverse here we have a somewhat similar illustration. Uh, again, copying from a pop star. I think this was David Sylvian from the band uh, Japan. And it says 1983 here, so we've gone ahead about four years from that previous illustration. Uh, and, um, yes, if you've seen some of my other videos, and I will link to the playlist that this indeed will become a part of, uh, you've probably seen some uh, drawings like this uh, from my high school years. Let's see if we can find some more. This is actually going back a little bit to the year 1980, uh, a copy of an oil painting at the Detroit Institute of Arts. I am not absolutely sure who did the original painting, so I can't uh, give credit there, but um, I learned a lot from taking uh, drawing classes at the um, Art Museum there in Detroit, and uh, it was very much a sort of formative influence on me. Uh, got me off on the right path studying the great masters. Highly encourage anyone who wants to become a good artist to uh, at least spend some period of time studying the works of the old masters, as I did way back in 1980. So this is something a little different. I was asked to design a bumper sticker for my high school, the University of Detroit, Jesuit High on Seven Mile Road, and indeed you recognize, uh, if you know Eight Mile, the movie by Eminem, he was uh, referring to an actual series of uh, roads, the mile roads uh, in Detroit, starting around five or six mile, then you went up to seven, eight, and uh, eight mile was the border uh, at which uh, you left the city of Detroit. That's why it has that kind of significance. I grew up south of seven mile, and I must say I'm kind of pleased with this design. I had never really studied design and uh, uh, didn't, I wasn't particularly fascinated with it uh, as a uh, young person, but uh, I, I think this holds up, guys. What do you think? It's not a bad design for a bumper sticker, and um, um, I can take a certain amount of pride of, in having not completely botched the job. Let's move on to another piece of artwork. Here's a poster from a uh, high school play that I had a part in. I was really into actually acting back in high school. It's The Three Musketeers. It's funny, I say that I was not into design work, but uh, indeed this sort of Again, shows me trying to come up with a sort of movie posterish arrangement of figures and so forth. 
um, interesting, you know, uh, foreshadowing of, of styles that I would use later on in Mickey Falls and uh, Brody's Ghost. I think you can see there's uh, some similarities here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, I was forced to use really just one color here, the color red on white, and that can be a, a useful challenge for you as an artist when you're uh, forced to uh, work within the limitations of the printing format. I wonder if any of you have ever had to do that. But uh, speaking of my acting career back in college, I've got another uh, illustration that relates to that. I think I said college by mistake in that previous clip. Sorry, high school. This is all high school stuff. In fact, there'll probably only be one uh, drawing in here that came from my college years. This uh, is uh, Our American Cousin, a play that I performed in uh, at uh, Henry Ford Museum uh, in Dearborn, Michigan. It was actually a paid part. I, was, I can claim to have had professional acting work when I was in high school. Not very much money, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I was hanging out with all these, you know, 20 year old, 30 year old, 40 year old uh, actors. And uh, this character right here, I believe, is meant to be me. Wickens, the postman, I believe, was the character I played. This uh, uh, play became famous because it was the one that uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln was shot uh, when he was attending. And I think that is the main reason that it is remembered today. But uh, I certainly had a lot of fun. And those of you watching this video, if you are a member, uh, if you are a member of the sort of drama club or local theater, yeah, you know what I mean when I talk about the kind of camaraderie that you feel when you're a part of a big group of people uh, putting on a play like that. I certainly have uh, many happy memories uh, of that time in my life. Many of you will recognize this as a study of the famous uh, Escher illustration of the hand drawing a hand. Um, I said I was going to try to get this in the order that it was done, but I think I've completely uh, blown that promise. This, this precedes high school, I'm pretty sure, and I was quite proud of, um, I don't know, the, the level of uh, faithfulness that I was a able to achieve uh, sometime late uh, elementary school or middle school when I did this one, but uh, boy did I do a bad job of choosing paper. First of all, super flimsy, almost like tracing paper level of thinness. Uh, though I did not trace the image, I, I just drew uh, by eye, you know, uh, studying it. Uh, but look at all those wrinkles. That's what happens uh, when you, first of all, choose bad paper and then you don't preserve it very well. I just sort of glued it onto this board. Anyway, kind of a shame. I wish I would have uh, started with better paper. Let this be a lesson to you all. Do as I say, not as I did. This one from some years later, again, not very well taken care of. You can see it's uh, been scuffed up and uh, treated badly uh, over the years. Um, hopefully I've improved <laughs> in my treatment of my artwork, uh, preserving it a little better than I used to. But yeah, it's supposed to be like a, a glass apple. I'm sure I was studying either the actual object or a photo of it. But again, you see this sort of uh, diagonal line style. Maybe I can challenge myself to return to this style someday. Let me know if you'd uh, like, me to see, uh, like to see me do that in a video. This is from 1983, so we're uh, in my third year of high school here. Um, let's move on to an actual oil painting that I did at that time. This is a study of a uh, Frank Frazetta oil painting. I, I'll see if I can find the original painting and splice it in here by way of comparison. It was one of very few uh, oil paintings that I attempted uh, in high school. This again, 1983, uh, and uh, I think I was trying to create portfolio pieces that I could use to um, uh, get into college uh, or even win an art scholarship of some kind. Not that I think this <laughs> is worthy of a scholarship looking at it now, but not bad. It's a, uh, it was one of my first times sort of dipping my toe into oil painting. And uh, I think I may have even referred to this in a subsequent video when uh, David Small in college saw me uh, studying Frank Frazetta and he said, hey, not bad, but, you know, go back and study the people that Frank Frazetta studied, which is to say, um, you know, the masters like Leonardo da Vinci uh, and so forth. So anyway, there you go. My oil painting abilities uh, many years ago. 
This will hopefully bring a smile to your face. It kind of brings a smile to mine. It's the guys from Monty Python. I was a big fan, uh, and in a funny way, this represents fan art, I suppose, back when I was in high school, showing, um, uh, unfortunately, t <laughs> uh, Terry Gilliam did not qualify in my eyes. I chose everyone else, all the other five members uh, of the group, to put into this illustration. I think this is very much Life of Brian era, stuff. I must have maybe even had a book that had uh, photos. Uh, clearly all of these uh, copied from the various photos. I'm still a big fan of uh, Michael Palin uh, here and uh, have followed his work uh, in the years after uh, Monty Python kind of split up. Anyway, let's have a look at one more illustration. So I said most of this was from uh, my sort of late elementary school, high school years. This is the one that comes from college. A self-portrait in a very, very cartoony style. Uh, probably the only time I tried to uh, do a self-portrait this way. It's kind of freaky looking. <laughs> Look at those eyebrows. I mean, I do have big eyebrows, but there's something a little creepy about this illustration. Anyway, thought I'd leave it uh, here uh, for today, but uh, I've got enough to make at least three or four other videos showing this lost uh, artwork. It's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, but next week I'll be sure to come back with uh, one of my more typical uh, how to draw videos. But for now, let me go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.